A brand not making my size doesn't give me grounds to talk or degrade them. Then why am I still in their mission statement? Why do they call themselves size inclusive, even though they stop at an XXL? And XXL is pretty big. I don't know why these people have the audacity to claim that they need anything higher than that. Like, an XXL is pretty massive. I mean, granted, there are some pretty big men out there. There are some pretty big ladies out there. But at a certain point, isn't it better to just take accountability? Like, I get it. Like, Samira, dude, the way, <laughs> the way Samira looks sometimes just comes off so incredibly creepy. And, you know, the way that she talks, too, is just so incredibly condescending. She talks as if she's, like, a civil rights activist from the 1960s where those people actually had to say something, you know, a value. But when Samira talks, all she really talks about is, like, I don't know, the trauma of being fat and then not having the ability to find clothes and that people are... I guess terrible, disgusting people if you think that people should lose weight in order to find access to those particular things. But a lot of the issues that these fat activists are facing currently are due to the fact that they are that they are the sizes that they are. And I understand, like, you want to find clothes. That's really okay. Like, I understand it. And that's great. Like, I think you guys should be clothed. I think you should, 100%. Uh, I don't necessarily understand the clothing pattern that you have right here. I don't, is this, like, an extra armhole or something? Like, what, what is going on here? Maybe, I don't know, was this like for that second head? You ever watch Men in Black where that guy had that one extra head come out the side uh, behind his back? I think that was actually played by the guy from Jackass, right? Am I wrong? I feel like that's the guy that played in Jackass. I could be wrong. It's been so long since I watched the original Men in Black. But this person, Samira, is, oh, oh, so beautiful. The way that they expel words out of their throat and make them almost seem like they're valuable when the reality of it is, no, they're not valuable. Most of the stuff they say are is completely invaluable. Invaluable. Why do they say no, not valuable. Yeah. They make clothes for everybody. We take pride in our history of making fashion accessible to everyone and lead by our various by our values, we strive to build more welcoming, inclusive, sustainable industry. So, like, this is a very generic statement. I don't know where you're getting, like, oh, yeah, we're going to make clothes for everybody here. This is this is a very, 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 very basic statement. That, and I'm going to also point it out, too. Just because a company says they're going to do something, and they can really just mean that in, like, a variety of different ways. You understand? That would be like if McDonald's were like, oh, we're going to strive to ensure that there are more vegan options on our menu. So what they do is, like, they just make food with more tomatoes in it. Like, you do understand it's very different. Like, just because you see it one way doesn't mean that's actually the way that they're going to do it. I think it's pretty interesting that you're actually considering that that would be how they would do it. Which would be like, I don't know. Is 2X not big enough for you? How much further do you need to go? Like, is it 5, 6, 7, 8, 9X? How fat are you guys really? And then also, I want to point it out, depending on how big you are, the chances of you leaving the house are severely diminished. Like, the bigger you get, the harder it is for you to even then to navigate the world in general the bigger you get becomes significantly harder and harder and for somebody like samira you know maybe she's not dealing with the problems right now maybe she is somebody who's just walking around with no joint problems no like high blood pressure but usually all those problems tend to arise all at once you know it's like a domino effect right you get one thing then the next week something else comes up something else comes up and you go to the doctor maybe you have good blood work but then the next week you go there it's terrible blood work because it's a consistent downfall with these people and Samira might, even though contrary to popular belief, I think Samira's in her 20s, I think. I don't know, personally. Um, it's very ambiguous with a lot of these fat people. Uh, sometimes they could be a lot older than they actually are. Sometimes they could be a lot younger than they, than they actually are. It's really ambiguous. None of these people actually look their age. But the point I'm making is here, most of the things that you have a problem with can literally be alleviated by the simple thing of just losing weight. And I understand that that may not be a practical solution given the fact that this woman literally has entire music videos dedicated to being fat and how beautiful it is and having a big back and things such. <laughs> That's a crazy thing to say. But having a big back and, you know, being organically beautiful while fat, which is crazy. But the way you're looking at these like mission statements or the way that these companies are saying things and then like I guess seeing it like one particular way, nobody looks at it like that. Nobody. Even though they stop at a size 20. Damn. Why do they say that they empower all women? <laughs> Dude, nobody. <laughs> Why are you going so far? You're stretching so far to make it seem like it's like a big problem. All year, all together with FP movement is rooted in community 
It was created to bring the power of collective movement to all inspiring fun, community driven fitness. And what, where are you even getting this? Like, where are you talking? Where I don't even think they mentioned women at all. Is this like a woman company? Oh, I guess it is. Is this, I don't, I don't even, what is this like hieroglyphics? Can somebody tell me what this means? FPM movement? I, I don't know what that is, dude. What? That, that, why is it written like that? Did they purposely make it seem like nobody can read that? Okay. But where are you getting anything that you're saying from this? You're stretching so far to try to create a point. And then the, the point that you're making is meaningless given the fact that whatever you're reading here, that what you're outlining doesn't even correlate to what you're saying. When they stop at an XL. And XL is pretty fucking big, dude. You guys are fat, dude. You guys are real big. You guys got to calm down on them carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really <laughs> that? And I think this whole conversation is... <laughs> the, key par the key pillars to our social impact agenda are sustainability, <sighs> diversity and inclusion, supply chain and community. Okay? Like, listen, I don't care anymore when people start quoting diversity and con inclusion. That could be very, very ambiguous of a thing. Inclusion could literally just be, we hired an Asian guy, and he's cool. His name is, you know, I don't even know. His name's like Jamal. He's a cool Asian guy. He's black? Yeah, but he's from Asia, so it kind of works, right? You get the best of both worlds. You can hire a black guy, and he's Asian. Simultaneously, you get the best of both worlds, right? So, I'm not saying that companies and other organizations shouldn't strive for diversity. I just hope that they're striving for diversity in the right areas and not just hiring people based off of skin tone or gender or sexuality or things that they cannot control because that doesn't often lead to productivity. You can't just hire a particular demographic of people and expect that demographic of people to perform to the same demographic of people that you're hiring for specifically for, I don't know, actual performance, which I never had a problem. Like, I, I have a big issue with people in organizations hiring people based off of things that they cannot change like that's you're just basically diversity hire diversity hiring at that point which is fine if that's what you want to do um if you want to reach a quota and things such as so forth you live in a free country go ahead hire all the people you want it might or might not be racist whatever but hiring people based off of these things that are not things that you can change sure you can hire fat people based off of things that they can't like being fat but like i don't most of the time Hiring a fat person is like a very, very niche scenario. Like I've worked with a lot of fat people. Granted, I worked in a very physical oriented job and a lot of these fat people could not perform to the physical orientation that a lot of other people could. And that could severely impede your ability to perform. And also even in general, like working in an office job or like working in a job where you're sitting down for the majority of the day, a lot of people might think, David, you're sitting down for 99% of the day at the works at the workplace. Why do I need to not be fat? Like being fat shouldn't impede my ability. I beg to differ. I see a lot of fat people in general always complaining about the fact that they have very poor. Uh, they're always they're always excessively tired. They always have aches and pains. They're always like you know taking some types of. Uh, medicines or drugs to alleviate those particular types of pains they're constantly never going to be performing to the same degree so it's like you know and even though fat people are holding more energy storage than i don't know an average sized person their energy expenditure is significantly higher compared to a person that is not as big as them like they're more energy efficient like thinner people are more energy efficient than fatter people even though that doesn't really even make sense that you're holding more weight but that's how it is like you're just not going to be able to perform but go off samira slay queen edges do riddle me that I also love it that she's talking about this stuff as if she's making points when in reality none of the points are sticking at all given the fact that the things that she's outlining are not even – they're not – they don't correlate at all to any of the things that she's saying. Why – okay. And I think this whole conversation is about audacity. <laughs> but you seem to have more of a problem with my audacity as a fat person. I don't care that you're fat. Like, it just make good points. Like, it's fine. Like, y having the fat on your body shouldn't impede your brain function. At least, I don't think it should. Maybe it would, like, slow you down to the fact that, like, I know when I eat high quantities of food, I'm a little bit slower usually. And this goes just, like, generally speaking. So, I usually, if I'm going to do something big, mentally speaking, I, I don't usually eat if i do eat i'll eat like two or three hours in advance because i feel the most energy efficient like that next two or three hours after so maybe that's what's happening maybe you're eating so frequently that you're just like brain fogging yourself but if you're telling me 
that my audacity is with you being fat. I don't care that you're fat. I just wish that you had better points because if you can argue that being fat has no actual impeditive or it's not impeding your ability to do stuff out in the world. And then also the fact that you guys think that you shouldn't be actually like looked down upon for being fat when it comes to the fashion industry, when in reality, most of the stuff that you guys are having problems with are due to you having these problems with yourself. Like you could alleviate all these issues yourself. Then brand. I also don't like it when Samira has these long, deep pauses. I, I, I really despise it when people, listen, it's fun. I'm not here to tell people how they can and cannot talk completely fine. I know that I tend to talk a little bit faster than most, which is fine too. But for somebody like Samira, I understand you're doing it for dramatic effect. You're trying to make it seem like your words are hitting a little bit harder than they actually should. And I get it. But in reality, the situation and like the way you, the context in which you use these words, it's, 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 it's agonizing to sit there and watch you say something, pause, and then compact with it. Like, it's just, just say what you got to say. That doesn't need to be dramatic effect. That's not how you communicate with people. Audacities. Person. Then brands audacities to take our from day one we've been on a mission to i gotta like put the cursor okay i i'm good at, i'm okay with reading but i need to like put my finger on it you know from from day one we've been on a mission to democratize fashion and make shopping fun again first of all i don't even know who you're making shopping fun this is gap okay to bring incredible style and quantity who's reading this by the way like has anybody ever thought, you know, I really want to go to Gap right now, so let me just read their mission statement to ensure that when I go to Gap, I know what they're bringing. To, I know their mission statement. Nobody cares about that. Why do you care? Why is this even something? I didn't even know Gap had mission statements. That's so weird to me. But fine, whatever, dude. Um, by the way, I don't even understand who you're trying to make shopping fun again for. Have you ever met a dude that even likes shopping in general? I hate it. It's like the worst thing ever. Maybe if I'm going with a girl and then like maybe, I don't know, maybe it could be fun sometimes with a girl. But most of the time, I don't like it at all in general shopping. So I wonder who this mission statement is even for. Confidence. Audacities to take our confidence. Nobody's our joy <laughs> and use it to sell mediums and larges. <laughs> and you think that I need to be a medium or a large before I deserve to feel fashionable. You just need to lose weight in general. Like, do, do, oh, man, dude, it's. I, if you want to be fat, but you cannot accept this particular body size. See, like all of this binges on the fact that you guys do not think that it's interchangeable. Like th that's, that's the key here. You might have a case if you were very, very obese and the majority, if not all the fat people on the planet could not lose weight. If that was the case, fine. It makes sense. You guys need clothes. Retailers should obviously make clothes for fat people. That makes sense because fat people can't change the way they look. Makes sense, right? But Given the fact that you guys can literally change the size that you are, it's not impossible. Matter of fact, it's a completely okay and possible thing for you guys to do with little to no effort. Calories in, calories out, understanding nutrition, and doing it on a repetitive basis. So when I hear you guys say this, like, oh, I need to be a medium or a small in order to fit into stuff, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you than that, dude. Um, you're, you're, if you're so fat that you no longer fit in conventionally clothes anymore, you are too big in general. That is a problem. And I'm going to keep it a buck with you. If you're having problems with the clothes, you're probably having problems with like a whole bunch of other stuff that you're probably not recognizing, but you're focusing really, really heavy on the clothes. And here's the thing. I do want you guys to be clothed. I really do. But oftentimes you guys are missing the plot. You guys are looking at these very small details that have absolutely no relevance to the actual situation that you guys are in. You're dying. The diabetes, the high blood pressure, the joint pains, it's not something that's going to go away. The longer you keep the weight on your body, the more problems you're going to have because it keeps adding up and adding up and adding up. And it's not just hundreds of pounds that are pushing down on your ankles or knees. No, it's thousands of pounds because you got to understand how pressure works, right? And how, 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 how fucking, how Newton's laws of, of our reality work, okay? So when you push down on the earth, the earth also has to push down as a byproduct of that, right? When you push against a table, you're also pushing the force of the table back upon yourself, right? The, the table is pushing back. So when you step on the floor as a person that weighs 400 pounds, you are pushing 400 pounds on your ankles, which is really realistically like thousands of pounds because your ankles and your knees are very small joints that have to support the upper body, right? And everybody knows this. 
The reason why when you cut something with a knife, the reason why it cuts is because it's a very small point. The pressure that you're putting is very light, but it's a lot of pressure for that very small point. And the same thing could be said for your ankles and knees. That is adding up. You are putting thousands of pounds of pressure on your knees, your joints, your back, and then the blood that has to pump through your vein that is already exaggeratedly large and big. So when you have these problems and you're sitting here talking about how you can't find clothes, I get it, but you have a lot more bigger problems to worry about. No pun intended. To feel confident. You can feel, man, dude, I don't know why these people put so much value in what other people think about them. And I understand like you want, man, dude, I'm giving these people way too much credit here, dude. You're big, right? You're fat. You have a lot of things to worry about. I get that you want to feel confident and stuff like that, but you're literally taking away your own responsibility and you're putting it upon somebody else to try to make it seem like they have to do it for you. When in reality, it's all up to you. It's your job to put yourself in a bracket of healthy. This is all about audacity. And there is no issue when it comes to other conversations of inclusion. Like what? But plus size clothing. Because like, look, okay, black dudes, like if you're black, there's nothing you could do about being black, right? We know that. Like if you're black, you're black. If you're gay, you're gay. So that's fine because like you can't be like, oh, like no company, especially nowadays, is going to be looking at a paper and be like, oh. What? This guy? What? This guy is so good. His resume is so amazing. What? This guy's going to make us five times our money in a year? And he's only asking for 100k a year? Oh my god, this guy's a, a money printing machine. Oh. He's a black man. No way. That's not happening, right? Nobody's doing that. You know what I'm talking about? So like, when they talk about these inclusion arguments, right? There are some basises. When we're talking about gay people and black people, because if you're discriminating based off of those things, it doesn't make any sense to do that. Unless you're talking about a particular field where you need to hire somebody based off of like, I don't know, if you're hiring like an actor to be like Julius Caesar, you're probably not going to hire a black guy. You might like, you can't argue against that naturally. That doesn't make any sense. So you can't do that. But when we're talking about somebody being fat, you guys are literally physically impeding your own selves based off of the sizes that you are. So... If you're walking into it, well, maybe walking's a little bit hard to say here, right? If you're wobbling into a store and you don't find clothes that fit you and you, you, you go to multiple stores and they still, none of the clothes fit you because you're so fat. Why would you ever determine that to be a problem with the stores? It's like when somebody dates multiple people, right? And they go on multiple dates, multiple dates, multiple dates, hundreds of dates, and none of nobody, nobody wants to date them. Why would you consider everybody else to have the problem, but you don't have the problem? Why do you always think that it's somebody else's fault, but never your own? Why can't you ever look in the mirror and see that maybe there's something that you can do in order to alleviate the situation that you're in? Is where you're drawing a line. And that's very telling. What are you talking but about, man? This woman, yo, this is so cringy, dude. <laughs> Why is she talking like this? And that's very telling. But do let me tell you and tell everybody else that I will continue to let brands know that if you're going to include me in the mission statement, you very, very sparingly, dude. I mean, you could say they included you in this, the mission statement, but all the mission statements that you put up as proof of including you were very like anybody could like i'm sure a camel could read that and be like wow i'm included they said diversity and i'm diversity therefore they include camels like that sure like i'm sure that you can have a case on that but it's super 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 uh oh man that's a very weird way of ever looking at this stuff but do you man i mean that's if that's what you want to look at it dude i mean it doesn't make a lot of sense to me Sure. You will also include me in the size chart. You, see, you can't force companies to do this, right? It, it may not even be practical for you guys to even be... <laughs> You guys have body types that are not going to be consistent across all, all the same body types. So if you're like a 9X... A person at 9X is not going to fit in the same clothing as another person in 9X because of the way that your body sizes are oriented. When I am a small, or you're a medium, or even a large... You, your bodies follow a basic outline, right? You have a torso, you have legs, and your body is roughly shaped like this. Depending on if you're a girl, maybe you got some hips or something like that, but even those, those clothes are usually oriented towards women, right? That's why women usually have a harder time finding clothes because 
the bust size is going to be different. Maybe your butt cheeks are a little bit bigger, right? Men follow a basic, like a basic scheme of like, I don't know, broad shoulders and shaped like a rectangle, right? So men are a little bit more uh, square shaped and women have a little bit more shapely to them, right? And so it's usually a little bit harder for women to shop for clothes. And because of these things, usually somebody at a small is going to be able to fit into another person's small because their bodies fit roughly the same face shape, the roughly the same shape. When you're a five, six, seven, eight, nine X, there's absolutely no way that a somebody at eight X is going to fit into the same clothes that somebody also that is in that same eight X. You guys are literally completely different people because maybe you hold your weight in your gut. Maybe he holds his weight in his legs. Maybe you hold your weight in your back. Maybe he holds his weight in his chest. There are plenty of places where the body is going to store fat and that's all dependent based off of the genetics and the consistency of which you, where you eat the food, right? So if you're if you're uh, bigger than somebody or whatever, so it's it's really really inconsistent. And then also a lot of times um even if these companies do bring out these plus size clothing like Gap did, um, they had to stop selling them because they weren't selling. And you know why they weren't selling? Because like a, a fucking 15X shirt, nobody's buying that. That's going to sit on the shelf for like 20 years. And then eventually when the dust covers it completely, it imbues itself within the shelf itself. And then it becomes the shelf. That's what it's like. If you're going to defend brands because they shouldn't have to work with fat people if they don't want to, then brands should also not have to work with bald people who only wear black tank tops if they want to. Brands should be able to- I gotta brush his teeth a little bit, dude. Damn, bro. You don't ever brush your teeth? It's oral hygiene's really important, bro. Where where are you right now, dude? What are you in like one of those like Home Depot, outside of those Home Depot houses? You know what I'm talking about? Those little like uh, sheds that you could buy outside of Home Depot for like 900 bucks? Anyway. Then brands should also not have to work with bald people who only wear black tank tops if they want to. See, like, when, when you say this, it's like, what you're doing is you're outlining the individual. If you don't know, they're talking about this guy, Skippy, right? Which, uh, he made a video. Oh, check back on, check back on, I think it was Thursday's video. It's called Leo Skippy, whatever, Fat Acceptance Freaking Out Over Leo Skippy or something like that. Um, he's talking about that guy because that guy wears he's bald or whatever. That's it's a stupid it's a stupid argument because there are a lot of fat people and there's only one Leo Skippy and then he already literally complained at the fact that he can't find clothes because he's a giant man in the sense of he's six foot seven and he has a size sixteen shoe. So he already is complaining by that. Like he, he it's it, and, but he just accepts it. So even this argument doesn't even make sense. Brand should be able to be like, no, we want somebody who has hair. We want somebody who actually has style besides wearing a black tank top. Because I guarantee if those were the things that were being said by brands, you wouldn't like that, sir. You know what's really interesting is like, I hear people say these bullshit talking points that actually don't even make sense at all. Like this guy literally just said nothing. And I when I when I went to go get this video, right, I, I remember very specifically seeing the reception of this video was very good. Like this guy had thousands and thousands of likes, like 20, 30,000 likes and millions of views and tons of comments and people were all supporting him and i just i'm watching the video now and i'm like really like this guy actually said nothing at all like there was literally no substance to what he said and he didn't actually prove a point he, he just said like oh yeah you if you think that fat people should be oppressed for this then i think leo should also be oppressed for this Okay, bro. I mean, at least Leo had a point. At least Leo actually brought some facts to the table. Man, whatever, bro. I'm just sick of people like, if you're going to say something, can there at least be some value to it? If Especially if you're going to correlate it to something else? Black tank top. Because I guarantee if those were the things that were being said by brands, you wouldn't like that, sir. Hey. I want to talk to y'all about something important and topical. And then you guys remember this girl? Like, I remember like last year when I first discovered this girl. She didn't blow up. Like, she's doing really well nowadays, so... Good for her. Good job. Love you. But um, she got really big off of this like laugh that she used to do. Is she used to be like, <laughs> or I don't know. It was like a really, really cringy, disgusting, awful laugh. And the thing about like TikTok and like big communities, and even in general, like I know some guys that fake particular accents. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Well, I don't actually remember his name. I will call him out. There was a guy that I used to watch when I used to be addicted to this phone game. And it was like a Dokkan video game. I forgot his name, but he was like a big fitness influencer. And I remember I used to watch his videos because I was like, oh, yeah, I really like this game. I'm going to like keep track of it, right? And he would have this like really, really inconsistent Boston accent. It would be all the, it would be like every video he would try to have like one or two words that would point out to be like, oh, wow, where are you from? It wasn't consistent because I knew it wasn't consistent because when he would say that same word in like four sentences later, it wouldn't be the same way he pronounced it. And that's not how accents work. You're not going to just randomly out of nowhere 
start talking in a particular accent and then just switch it off. That doesn't make any sense at all. And I forgot what the guy's name is. I would call him out if I remember his name. And it was a long time ago that I started watching his videos. So I don't know. But uh, this guy, dude, was very inconsistent. And the same thing could be said with like people that do that on a day a day to day basis for like content or cr content creation. It's not practical because you're putting on a performative show, and if you want it to be sustainable, you're gonna have to give yourself. Uh, you're gonna have to do that like every day. I think personally, just being yourself is probably the better choice. And for somebody like this person who was doing that really, really disgusting laugh, and don't get me wrong, it got her views. It did. But it's not sustainable because people are there for the gimmick. And that gimmick is not sustainable because it's not you. It's it's something that you just adopted randomly, if that makes any sense. And we're not going to talk about it anymore after this. First things first. If I'm the realist. Drop this and let the whole world feel it. And I'm still in the murder business. I can hold you down like I'm giving lessons of physics. If y'all see something happen on this app, you know for a fucking fact I have spoken out against and I genuinely do not support and never fucking have. There's absolutely no reason for you to ask what my thoughts are on it. You should. Yeah, but usually when people are doing... Sometimes I feel like these people haven't been on the internet for a long period of time. Even if this is true, like you're a very well-known individual and people probably know your stance on everything that doesn't change the fact that you're going to have people around you that don't know who you are that are going to ask your opinion because they want to know your opinion on this particular thing or maybe they're new people that don't know who you are or whatever it may be so i don't think it's a very far-fetched idea like if you ever do live streams people come in and they ask you the same questions over and over and over again which is fine like i'm perfectly fine telling you what my favorite color is i'm perfectly fine telling you what my favorite food is i'm, I'm perfectly fine if you're asking me you know the same questions over and over and over again because i know that's just what it is it's completely fine it's normal it's natural it's what it is right that's what the internet is and that's okay because people are discovering you every single day which is great thank you for being here by the way you fucking know what my thoughts are on it that's one see like i don't watch this woman's i don't watch this this woman's content enough to know what her opinions are on particular things to even guess what they are. I mean, granted, she's probably making this video on the Leo Skippy stuff since that's like really trendy right now. So she probably disagrees with it given the fact that she made a whole bunch of videos in the past about fat acceptance. But that is also going to be very ambiguous for somebody that just randomly comes upon this video. Two, the subject of fat phobia is constantly discussed on this app. A lot of times in a way that is unhelpful and unproductive. A lot of times in ways that is disguised as motivation, but is actually just bigotry. And by that, I mean this. Fat phobia goes far beyond insults. It goes far beyond jokes about people being whales, cows, whatever the fuck you want to call fat people. And I've been called it all. Believe me, you bitch. The amount of fat phobia I've experienced online in the last two, three years would fucking shock you, bitch. In fact, it would traumatize most of you. Uh, I mean, I'm not really surprised by that, dude. If you've been on the internet for any significant period of time, even if you're not a prominent person, you're probably going to be experiencing a lot of verbal trauma. But I think that if you're going to be on the internet for any extent, any period of any period of time, you need to build up some form of tolerance to the abuse because it is going to be all the time, all the time, regardless of who you are. I know, I remember when I grew up in the Call of Duty hours, and this is like MW2, Modern Warfare 2 lobbies, Call of Duty, Black Ops lobbies. There were people literally every single day calling you the N-word, saying your mom was sucking them off, and they were like 10 years old, and you had to combat that in some particular type of way. Now, the amount of people that I knew, that I've seen firsthand, that have freaked out over that, that have freaked out, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the fuck out of your bitch, you're... that's never gonna work, dude, because, like, what do you mean you're gonna beat the fuck out of me? Anybody that's, like, threatening somebody over the internet is cringe, that's cringy, dude, that is really cringy, nobody, don't ever do that, you immediately lose whatever argument point that you had if you threaten that person over the internet, that is really, really, really cringy, dude, I'm laughing at you if that's what you're doing, and then also, um, like I said with before, the tolerance, you need to at least look at these particular comments and not really take that to a whole lot of value. Like I've seen a whole bunch of people that really focus on bad comments and they ignore the really, really good ones. And that's really sad because I understand why you're doing it because it's like the one person that disagrees with you. You want to know why they disagree with you. Why am I so bad? I think I'm a good guy. You know, sometimes it may not even be the practical idea to, to want to even know why that person's doing it. Sometimes they're just assholes or sometimes they just think that you're bad and that's okay because if you know, and you, you know, like most people think this is okay. It's okay to have people that don't like you. And it's important not to focus on that too much.
So if you're going to be on the internet for any extended period of time, and I see this quite a bit in the fat acceptance community when they cry or they have like mental breakdowns and stuff like that on the internet, dude, there's a place, a time and a place for that. Like if you were, if 10 years ago and you, you did that on the internet somewhere, people would most definitely make fun of you. It would be like, uh, they would blow up like out of nowhere, dude, your shit would be all over the place. And don't get me wrong. It's better than it's ever been. Obviously people are more tolerant now, but still have thick skin. In the same way that misogyny isn't just jokes about women making sandwiches, that phobia is not just jokes about weight. It goes so far deeper than that. That phobia is literally ingrained in every part of our culture, our government, our healthcare system, etc. If your definition of fat phobia is that stairs exist, therefore you should walk upstairs and you consider that to be fat phobia because fat people have an inability to walk upstairs once they pass a certain weight, then sure, that's fat phobia. But again, you guys have to come up with different terminologies and different words because your your level of laxness, your the extent at which like the 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 what is the word I'm looking for here? The slack that you give these words is ridiculous, okay? Like fat phobia is ingrained in everything. Yeah, yeah, sure. It, it, I'll give you that. It could be in the sense of like, "Oh, my car doesn't have enough seatbelt." Fat phobia. Oh, when I sit on public transit, I get made fun of because I'm taking up two speed, two seats and the grandma had to stand up, but I can't physically stand up sitting on the, tra on the bus or the train. So that's fat phobia. You, you guys are looking at fat phobia as if it's like the most liberal definitions of these things. Like you are literally looking at it like it's a, like you're taking this and you're turning it into this. Like it's, you're, you know what I'm saying? Like you're making these terminologies stretch so incredibly far. And I understand why you're doing that because you think that this is the way to get your point across. And it might convince certain people, but I feel like if anybody actually gives any thought at all, they would realize that all these claims that you have are literal bullshit. People and it's really sad. You know, like, I feel like I've been in this space. I haven't been, no, I feel like I haven't been in this space for long enough to be able to perfectly articulate these particular points, but I've been on the internet for a very long time. So I've, I've seen things come and go. Like I've seen, you know, big organizations. I've talked to a lot of people, things like that. So I can see, and I always give nuance to shit, right? I always see where other people are coming from, at least best of my ability. So I see where she's coming from, but it's just a really, really bad point. And the fact that I can like articulate these particular points back to these people better than they can is really, really sad. Literally fucking die because of fat phobia in the medical industry. You can say this about anything though. Like you can say this about like gay guys being gay phobic in medical industries because maybe they didn't test you for a certain thing or whatever. And, and maybe black guys are being unfairly, you know, prosecuted for certain things. Like there are problems, I agree. But to what degree and what, to what sensitivity, right? Like, what are you doing? Are you looking at some statistics somewhere and deducing that fat people are not being treated fairly based off of what? Like, I feel like just be... <sighs> These people, if you're going to the doctor and your doctor tells you that you cannot get a surgery because you are too fat to get the surgery and you may, you may die, you may die if we give you anesthesia and there's no possible way for us to get through these layers and layers and layers of fat. And then also sometimes it may not even be practical in the sense of like, if we do this, you actually might suffer more complications if we just didn't do the surgery at all. And you see that and you go, this is fat phobia. You have a mental problem. That is an issue. Okay. Like if a doctor is telling you that having the weight on your body is negatively impacting you and you, you tell that doctor that he's fat phobic, you have a problem. There is some kind of mental inconsistency with you. <laughs> So when people get on this fucking app and act like fat phobia is just hurt feeling, it's fucking ignorant and it's disrespectful. It's, it's fine to say this, but with anything in life, you need to at least try to look at the gray area because for every time somebody has a legitimate, uh, anytime somebody has a legitimate something bad happened to them, like I'll give you, an ex I'll give you a good example. Let's say for instance, you're a black guy. You were unfairly pulled over for literally nothing. The cop smelled weed in your car, takes you out of the car, arrests you for no reason. There was no drugs in the car. You still got arrested. Okay. You might have a case for racism, right? But I mean, I've had this happen to me before. I remember I was literally talking to a guy and he told me that he got pulled over for the cop. He's like, man, this cop fucking pulled me over, dog. And it was crazy. He was racist. And I was like, oh, man, that sucks, dude. What happened? He was like, man, he pulled me over. He was like, what, what, what did he tell you the stop was for? He said my backlight was out. And I was like, oh, okay. 
um, that's crazy. Uh, and it wasn't out, huh? And he was like, yeah, no, nah, it was. I, I was going to get it replaced like next week or whatever. It was out, but he still shouldn't have pulled me over for that. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, all right, dude. And he was like, yeah. And then he came over to the driver's side and I had, I had, I was drinking and I was like, bro, what are you talking about? Hold up, bro. Like, what are you saying right now? Sometimes there, I will agree that there are times where you have a just case, but then there are other times where you don't. And I feel like it's like the case of like, believe all women. Like, I don't know if that's a good, I understand the idea because I do believe women are sexually assaulted and things such and so forth. But believing all women just based off the fact that they're women is bullshit. That doesn't make any sense. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you're like exempt from malicious thoughts or terrible, terrible ways of thinking and things such and so forth. In the same way that if you're fat, I'm sure you're dealing with actual fat phobia, whatever you consider that to be. And then, but for that particular case, and then you also consider somebody going to the doctor and a doctor telling them they can't get a surgery done because they're too fat for that surgery to be done. And you consider both of those things to be the same thing. You are now actively devaluing whatever the hell you're saying, because that doesn't make any sense. Like you are, because those two things are now next to each other. If that, if that makes any sense. For many fucking reasons. And I don't care. Like, okay, let me go back real quick. Feeling. It's fucking ignorant and it's disrespectful. It's most of these things are probably feelings, most of these things. And I understand that you're very passionate about this and you probably think that there are people probably suffering from the negative effects of fat phobia. But simultaneously, dude, this is a condition that only binges on you. You cannot expect societal change based off of something as simple as you eat too much. That's crazy. You guys are asking for way too much. Like fat phobia is just hurt feeling. Most of it is. It's fucking ignorant and it's disrespectful. For she's taking the moral high ground here and then she's trying to, She's morally grandstanding in the sense of like, I feel more than you. How dare you say that it's just this? I know what it actually is. She's not actually really giving a point at all. She's just morally grandstanding. And this could work. This could work depending on the person that you're with. Sometimes when you have an argument with somebody or I guess even with yourself because she's not actually arguing with anybody at all. And I would struggle to even find her. I believe she probably would never have a, a, an actual conversation with somebody about this. Um, you might be able to steamroll somebody with morally grandstanding points where you hit that person with, how dare you think this? Like, how can you say that? This is crazy. Like, people are dying. People are feeling this. People are doing that. And then if you're not actually attacking the point and you're attacking the person behind it, you've lost. You don't actually have a point anymore because that's all that's telling me is that you don't have a leg to stand on. What you're actually just doing is trying to find some very small niche topic to grasp onto to try to like when people see the video or whatever you're talking about, they can at least see you as like the person that feels more. And for certain people, that might be more valuable. But for me, I don't care. Like, I don't care that you feel more than me. I don't care that you think that somebody's saying something like this, which is truthful, and then you deduce that to be terrible and destructive or whatever the word you use. I don't care. That doesn't mean anything. Like, fat phobia is just hurt feeling. It's fucking ignorant. And it's disrespectful for many fucking reasons. Ba boo hoo It's mean. It's disrespectful. Say something of value. Attack the point. So if you yourself think that you're not fat phobic because at one point you were overweight, first of all, that's not the same thing as being fat. It's really important that you know the difference. Sure, it's not, man, what are we doing right now, bro? What are we doing right now? That's like somebody going, oh, man, I know what you're going through. Um, I know you you just got shot, but I got shot like five years ago. And that person goes, you don't know what I'm going through because I got shot now. Okay, all right, bro. Sure, dude. Sure, bro. That. All right, man. Yeah, totally. Like, I get it. I understand what that person's saying. Like, they are fat currently. And then you to say that you were fat at one point, but you are no longer fat. Therefore, how can you talk about this given the fact that you are not in the same category as me, which is a very dumb thing to say because it's like basically saying you can't talk about something if you don't fit in this particular bracket, which doesn't work in any scenario ever. That'd be like me going to a doctor's office and being like, hey, I got a penis problem. And then a female doctor comes in and I go, you can't talk about this because you yourself don't have a penis. That's dumb. That doesn't make any sense. No, I don't. What the fuck are you even? That didn't even make any sense given the fact that if you were fat at one point at least you have the experience of being overweight so you can somehow bridge that gap but you don't even look at that all right man whatever man maybe i'm reading this too far first of all that's not the same thing as being fat it's really important that you know the difference because people who are overweight and people who are fat and live as a fat person have a much much different life experience than you. You're not saying anything though. This is meaningless. People that are fat have different life experiences compared to people that are not fat. Yeah.
I fucking hope so. I mean, yeah, everybody has different life experiences compared to everybody. Can you say something of value? What is even going on? These are just not even talking points. You're just saying words. So you cannot speak on something that you personally have never fucking experienced. This is dumb. This is stupid. This is dumb. This is absolutely dumb. This woman is dumb. That's dumb. That doesn't make sense. You can't do that. That's... Bro, that's literally the point I just said. Like, if you're a woman, you can't talk on men's issues because men are men and women are women. Are you fucking dumb? Anybody... You can look... Okay, from the outside looking in, just because I'm not black doesn't mean I can't acknowledge when racism happens to a black guy. You know what I'm talking about? In the same way that if you're a woman, I can look at your vagina and deduce that the big bubble cyst on your vagina probably isn't a good thing. Like, just because I'm not a fucking cat doesn't mean I can't look at an animal on the floor and then see that's a cat. What are you talking about? Are you seeing, are you saying that people are incapable of critical thinking or Bro, I'm sorry, dude. This woman is on some debt. I don't know how many times I've heard this particular talking point. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Because what I'm actually hearing here is that you're racist. This person is racist. Because what you're saying is that if you're not black, you can't relate to black people experiencing certain things. Because black people have a unique experience given that they're black. But that doesn't even make sense because black people are unique individuals. And not all black people are the same. Because black people are not just people that are born in America. There are black people all over the place. And even black people in America have different places where they're born. Where they're not going to have the same type of same mentality and things like that. In the same way that if you're not fat, you can't talk about fat issues. Is literally saying that all fat people are like hive minds and they all experience the same shit every single day across the spectrum when in reality that is not the case there are many fat people that disagree with this idea what do you say about those fat people man dude oh man dude Anytime, every time I watch these guys' videos, I always think it would be so much better if we can actually have a conversation about this. And it's not even because I feel like I can steamroll this person or completely ob obliterate their points. These people are literally working off of some crazy ass non-logical arguments. It's almost as if they never learned what two plus two equals. It's they're literally sitting here talking about how they always taking the moral high ground, always making it seem like you're the bad person for actually looking at it from a legitimate standpoint. And if you don't believe them, you're a bad person. I don't care if you look at me as a bad person. And like, all I'm hearing from you is that you, you I feel more than you, therefore I'm right. I don't care. Like attack the point, attack the points, please. So you cannot speak on something that- I would very much know why she thinks that. You can't just say those. That's a very, 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 uh, uh, solid statement like you once you say that statement then you yourself cannot talk about things now you do understand that like you have literally put yourself in a you have put yourself in a bracket of now because you're a woman and even now because you're a woman you may not even be able to talk about women issues because not all women are the same naturally so if you say something about a woman now you may not you may, you can't even talk about anything in general because you don't have the experience of that particular woman talking about this particular thing so shut your mouth right I, it's dumb it's dumb it doesn't make sense i can't believe you would say that you personally have never fucking experienced and past that if you don't think you're there's no follow-up there's no like nuance there's no reason why it's just an absolute statement it's dumb <laughs> it's oh my you're that is crazy i'm sorry i don't want to call this person dumb but there's some major cognitive dissonance here and this person is clearly lacking a lot a lot a lot of intelligence personally have never fucking experienced and past that and i don't care if you think I'm sorry if I keep going off on this. It's such a crazy ass statement. Just because one person experiences something because they're fat doesn't mean it's a universal thing that all fat people are going to experience that particular thing because they're fat. In the same way that if a woman, it, it, just because a woman is sexually assaulted doesn't mean every single woman has been sexually assaulted. In the same way that just because a black guy was pulled out of his car for no for no crime at all doesn't mean all black people are being pulled out of their car for every fucking crime. You know what I'm talking about? It's just, it's an absolute statement and there's no nuance. There's no like, oh, let me preference that there's nothing to it it's literally just say the words and then you do this person probably doesn't realize what they just said was probably one of the most stupid statements that they probably said in their entire life and it, it, it actually puts them in a corner of never being able to talk about anything ever for the rest of their life but they're probably never going to abide by that given the fact that they don't they themselves don't even believe in it so i mean i wouldn't doubt it that they they don't realize that but it, if they actually watch this video back or maybe even watch this video they would realize that this is actually the craziest statement of this video 
I, if you don't think you're fat phobic, but you're upholding fat phobic rhetoric, guess what, bitch? You're fucking fat phobic. I'm gonna keep it a buck. These people are also fat phobic because I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. And I'm gonna put her own logic on herself because she said that you don't have the experience to talk about certain things, right? You calling somebody fat or you saying that fat is a, a term to describe a fat person. There are many fat people that look at that term and think of it as the same way a black person might think of the N word, for instance, right? And I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like, let's just say hypothetically, that's the case. When you say fat and you say that if you say something or you're upholding, upholding fat phobia rhetoric and somebody considers that to be fat phobic rhetoric, are you also conceding that you are indeed fat phobic? So if that is the case, okay, follow my line of logic. If that is the case, aren't you yourself the person within making this video right here? Aren't you also fat phobic? Aren't you also the very thing you swore to destroy? What makes you think you can even talk upon this if you or yourself are fat phobic? How can you, somebody literally upholding the, you're upholding the realms of fat phobia within your very speech while criticizing for people that are holding the fat phobia within their very speech and you, you think that you could talk on that? Do you see how dumb it is? Do you see how stupid everything you just said was? Everything you said, dumb, dumb. And maybe, just maybe, you don't understand anything I said. And that's fine. That's probably really good, actually. If you didn't understand anything that I said, that's actually good. Because that means that you're probably very, that you can't keep trains of ride. You're just ignorant. That's fine. That's okay. That's actually the best case scenario. Because if you're ignorant, then you have an excuse. But if you did understand what I said and you still believe what you believe, then you're dumb. There's nothing else to say than that. You just have an issue. Upholding fat phobic rhetoric? Guess what, bitch? You're fucking fat phobic. Josh, she so must be looking in the mirror right now. Sorry, don't know how else to break that to you, but one plus one equals two. That's really interesting. I did not watch this video before, okay? One plus one equals two. Keep in mind, no logic was exchanged in this woman's mind. The brain cell must have been com like colliding with the, cr the crust of her... <laughs> the crust of her skull to create that thought process. Absolutely no wisdom behind those eyes. And last, stop blaming women of color for things that white people do on their fucking own. They what are we talking about, dude? Why are we bringing women of color and white people into this? Okay, all right, man, all right. I, I didn't watch this video. Blaming women of color for things that white people do on their fucking own. They did that with their own brain and their own thoughts. Are you talking about that dude, Skippy? Bro, what are we talking about? Why are we, what are you, what? Dude, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're black, white, woman, Asian, it shouldn't matter what any of those things are, depending on what you say. What the fuck does that matter? Do you have a little bit more leeway if you're a black guy? Do you have a little bit more leeway if you're a woman of color? Do white people not have any leeway? What are you talking about exactly? Are you racist? Are you actually racist, dude? <sighs> Hold up. I think this woman actually might just be admitting not only is she fat phobic, not only is she absent minded, but she's also bigoted and racist simultaneously. Oh my God, the combination is crazy here. I really, I don't even know what she's talking about here. Do on their fucking own. They did that with their own brain and their own thoughts. That's really interesting that she says that given the fact that all the things that came out of her head were also her brain and her thoughts. Believe it or not, when we spend time with people in real life, they don't always show us shit like that, okay? Sometimes- Oh, I see, I see. Okay, I'm connecting it. She was friends with that guy. She was friends with uh, the Skippy dude. And I get it now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to break it through. She was friends with that guy. And I guess what she's saying here is that he said something that was blasphemous. At least that's what people are saying that it is right now, even though it wasn't really blasphemous. It was just, he was speaking truth, right? Go back and watch that video, by the way, um, on, it was Thursday's video. Okay. It was called fat, Ex fat activists are going crazy over Skippy. Right. And, um, so she was friends with this guy. And I guess what people are saying is that how can you be talking on this given the fact that you were friends with that guy and he said that obviously you must be okay with it given that you were friends with that. And she's saying, I'm a black woman <laughs> oh, out of nowhere with it too, by the way. Damn, damn. I was like, where's the black woman even coming from? What does that have to do with anything? But I realized that she's a black woman. Okay, so she's a black woman and she's saying... <laughs> Oh my God. Hold on. I'm sorry. She, okay. 
uh, this is what I'm gathering, okay? This might not be what she's saying, but this is what I'm gathering using my deductive abilities. She's gathering that because he's white and he said something's blasphemous, that because she's black, that you should give her more leeway because she's a black woman and that he said that and he's white. Okay, all right. I don't know why it was relevant to say that. Um, Sure, you're black. Sure, he's white. And somehow you think that that means that you have more realm to like be excused for that? All right. Okay. I mean, sh <laughs> okay. Damn, bro. Damn, bro. The mental gymnastics that I just, I'm sorry, dude. My brain is like working on overdrive right now. Having to literally use the Rosetta Stone in my brain to somehow dismantle all the things that this woman is saying and like come up with context on the fly because this woman is literally incapable of coming up with context on her own and I have to like decipher it all. And okay, whatever, man. Did that with their own brain and their- So she's saying here, he did that with his own brain. Own thoughts. Believe it or not, when we- And then, okay, hold on. Let's go back real quick. Stop blaming women of color. She's the woman of color in question. Stop blaming her. The things that white people do on- For blame, don't blame her, who, is she being a black woman, relevant, for what white people say, Skippy, for what they say, when, okay, okay, because they were friends. Uh, even though that doesn't okay whatever bro i don't know why okay on their fucking own they did that with their own brain and their own thoughts yeah she's basically saying they said it i wasn't involved i'm a black woman believe it or not <laughs> when we spend time with people in real life they don't always show us shit like that okay sometimes we find out when the rest of you do and then we move accordingly but why does it matter that you're a black woman like what does that have to do with anything what do you think that like you deserve more nuance or something or that's it love you bye I, none of this shit made sense man i'm sorry bro this woman sometimes you gaze upon people right and maybe this is just a niche scenario right i'll give her the benefit of the doubt here maybe this is just a weird video that she did on the fly she didn't have time to research maybe she didn't have time she wasn't like i don't know it seems like she's sitting on the toilet doing this shit i don't know whatever I, it's always so weird to me when i see people that people treasure so highly and then I, when i watch their stuff i'm like dude this woman is actually incapable of critical thought. I, I honestly, do, and I understand she might be doing this because the majority of her people that watch her are probably fat, that are in the fat activist space. And she has to say certain things in order to appease those people. I get it, right? Most people do. And it's the audience that she's occurred. So she needs to keep supporting that audience or saying what she needs to say in order to have that audience be, you know, appeased in a certain way, right? But I cannot, if somebody is in the fat acceptance movement and they watch this video and you came away with anything other than this woman just made absolutely zero sense and she's going back on her friend and nothing, nothing that she said in this video actually contributed to anything of value, you're the problem. That's, you are an issue. That is an issue for you. You need to actually go back and watch this video like 15 more times to even get like the first, I don't know, 15 seconds down of understanding because that is crazy. This woman is actually, I'm not going to say she's dumb. This video and what she said in this video, stupid, dumb, absolutely atrocious, made zero sense. She should have gone back to the laughing videos. Bye. In order to have a space that is truly inclusive, that space needs to be safe for marginalized groups of people. And because of that, true inclusionary space must have a certain level of exclusivity. It just matters like what you mean by marginalized because the way that these people calculate, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, dude. This video is going to be really long today. I hope you don't mind. I'm sorry, okay? But it's just different the way that you say marginalized. There's nothing wrong if you want to have a discord completely dedicated to guys beating their meats. And that's like their, you know, that's their thing. Like, hey, guys, I just fucking coated my wall again. I'm laminating my own face tonight. I'm literally going to sit on the back of my neck and I'm just going to beat off in my own mouth, right? Fine. That's what you want to do. No women allowed. Women are gay. Fine. But like, it just really depends on where you're having these organizations, because obviously in America, we have a thing called civil rights. So if you're doing it in a particular place and you have a thing, you know, you don't want like white guys there, you don't want, like women there, things like that. If it's like a private event, fine. But if it's like in a held in a public place or like a, whatever, anyway. In order for a space to be truly inclusive, I can't be letting in Nazis and bigots, racist, homophobes. It's just like, what do you mean by Nazis and bigots? Because like literally the woman right before us was literally like a, a giant bigot, a giant bigot. Do not let her in. Because like, again, these people, they have a weird way of saying Nazis and Nazis, I guess, could sub sometimes mean like, 
I don't even know, dude. Like, I, uh, oftentimes, I can't even describe anymore what a Nazi is. Like, a Nazi is not even a guy that doesn't like Jews or a guy that believes in... So I don't know, man. It's whatever, bro. But the point I'm making is, like, they they believe what they believe based off of things they've experienced, not actually what the word means. So, for instance, I'll give you a good example. When they say something like, bigot, right? Or, um, oh, we want... We want fat people in this organization, right? They don't want fat people in that organization. They want a very particular breed of fat person. They want a genre of fat person that agrees with them because not all fat people are going to think the same way. There, There's a lot of fat people on the planet that think, oh, I'm fat. It's not a good thing. I need to lose weight. They don't want those fat people. They want fat people that agree with their ideology. So when you hear them say these words, don't just – don't just hear the general statement. You need to read further into it because in the same way they say they don't want bigots and they still represent the girl right before this. Transphobes, ableists, and on my page- Ableism is also like, oh man. will absolutely not be allowing fatphobes. You know, it's fine. I understand that you, you want to build this audience. Like, I get it. But like not having outside people that are- challenging your opinions and if they do challenge your opinions you delete the comments or you completely like annihilate them from the channel entirely that's not a good thing most of the time because how do you know that you're how do you know that what you believe is true if you've never actually had your beliefs to be tested those people have to be excluded because people who use their free speech as a way to harm marginalized groups of people make it so that space is no longer inclusive i am a huge advocate of freedom of speech and don't get me wrong I think people should say whatever they want to say, but you need to at least understand that words have value, right? I know that the statement of sticks and stones may break your bones, words never hurt you. That's true to a certain degree. If you have a big audience, if you have a lot of people that you, you that, that that believe you wholeheartedly, if you say something, for instance, like this woman, let's say hypothetically she has a big audience of people that are fat, and she puts out a video and says being fat is great, it's beautiful, has no health consequences at all, and her audience wholeheartedly believes her. They, she just dispoused an incredibly disgusting opinion that is going to hurt a lot of people. Freedom of speech, 100%. But that doesn't mean freedom of consequence. You can say a lot of things. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have people later on or people even in that moment look at that thing like, whoa, what the fuck? That's crazy. So to a certain degree, who you are and how you say things and where you say these things, you're going to be held liable for that shit. And I do believe that people should be able to say what they want to say because obviously if you say some fucked up shit, I want to hear it because I think that – that's awesome. Like you said some fucked up shit. Let's talk about it, right? But these people don't want to hear the let's talk about it. They want to hear the I'm going to keep saying the terrible, disgusting stuff that I say over and over and over again. You understand? Anyway. And by the way, I don't like the freedom of speech. As a way to harm marginalized groups of people. Yeah, freedom of speech. Hey, listen. Freedom of speech can harm in terms of like verbally. It's such a weird word to use, man. It's not exactly what harm means. Again, you have to literally keep looking into why these people use the words that they do. They know they're doing this strategically. To use the word harm in a particular verbal argument is crazy, but they got to say it because they know that if they do, it's going to increase the value. But anyway, <laughs> to sit there and say these particular things like you're telling me that being fat is bad, therefore you're harming this marginalized group. That is a very weird way of saying you hurt you hurt my feelings. That is a very weird way of saying that. What you're basically saying is that I'm marginalized. You know what people think about when they say marginalized, right? They're thinking about minorities. They're thinking about people that have been oppressed for years and years and decades of their lives based on nothing, based on things that they cannot change. That's what most people think about. In the same way that for somebody says these white supremacists on campus, they were, ah, they were being racist. What do you think about? You think about guys showing up in white hoods with torches and nooses trying to hang black people. You're not thinking about guys hanging up it's okay to be white signs all over the college. You understand? So it's the language. It's the language they use. There's no nuance in the language. They don't explain why they say the what they say. They just say it and they just hope you don't say anything back because it just sounds better. It just sounds better to say that. You're harming marginalized groups is very, very crazy thing to say in comparison to I was fat and he said something mean to me. <laughs> Make it so that space is no longer inclusive for those marginalized groups of people. So yeah, but then what you're also doing is like, if you're afraid of heights, what is the solution? Are you never gonna go up on buildings? Maybe, but 
if there was a chance where you ever did have to go up on the buildings, you're fucked because you never confronted your fear. Everybody knows that in order to get over a fear, you have to confront it. Incremental changes, slowly but surely, taking the steps to get to that, to get to the point where it's no longer a fear anymore. It's not completely evaporating it from your entire spectrum of reality. Like you can only hear one train of thought. And then if you hear anything else, you can, you collapse into a, a pile of croutons. It's not a good thing. Okay, what you're breeding is intolerance. You're literally telling people to be weak. When you say that you don't morally agree with fatness, I actually don't have to listen to thing you say. You I don't, but that's stupid. Like, oh my god, bro. Oh, my, I swear, this Leo Skippy video has completely a night, bro. We, I, this is like the Super Saiyan three transformation of the fat acceptance movement, dude. It is crazy. These people have unleashed a level of ridiculousness that is intol. It's it's insane. I cannot believe that they're saying the words that they're saying. I don't have to actually care about your free speech. You don't have to. Yeah, it's completely fine. Completely fine. But just like, I love it. You're just outing yourself. As a person that's completely intolerant, somebody that doesn't believe in other opinions. All right, that's fine. That's great. Matter of fact, thank you. Thank you so much for posting this video on a public platform. Because you're objectively wrong and- You can't say I'm objectively wrong. It's a moral value. Are you fucking dumb? <laughs> oh my God, dude. Who are these people? Where do they learn logic? Where are you coming from? What universe are you from where you say these words and people go, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. I have to listen to a thing you said. And I don't have to actually care about your free speech because you're objectively wrong and- Objectively wrong is a crazy statement given that it's an opinion. And bigoted. You are not welcome here. <laughs> Hope this helps. This video off by saying I really do like and respect Leo, but I do think that this video shows a very fundamental misunderstanding of what the actual issue- I gave that man so much great and I saw his apology and I was like, wow, okay. Hopefully now he understands like why what he said was wrong and he will unpack his fat phobic beliefs. And if you watch the Leo Skippy video that we did on Thursday, I know you keep referencing it. You need to watch it in order to understand some context here. He apologized for what he said, which in my opinion, he should not have. He shouldn't have backed down and I won't back down. Yo, I'll stand my ground. He should have done that because the only people that are coming after him are people of intolerance people that um their opinions uh what they're saying are just blatantly crazy and uh i i think he should have just doubled down like nah bro I'm, I'm being honest like if you're fat it's gonna be hard for you to operate in society and he will change and then i said this verbalize because i don't know where people are pulling this out of their fucking ass that i'm fat phobic Part of me. Yeah, I don't believe if you actually watch his original video, I don't think that you can actually draw fat phobia from that. But then again, like I said, very liberal uses of terminologies and the way they use words. So again, it's probably makes sense that they would think this guy was fat phobic. Nothing he said was fat phobic. So, so bad wants to make a joke and be like, I ain't scared of fat people. <laughs> <laughs> As a gay man. Deserves. Hold up, hold up, my bad. Can I go back real quick? I don't know where people are pulling this out of their fucking ass that I'm fat phobic. Part of me so bad wants to make a joke and be like, I ain't scared of fat people. <laughs> As a gay you man. Know, but what does it matter that he's a gay man? Bro, what do you, why are you guys playing oppression Olympics? Like, why do you have to emphasize that he's a gay man? As if that, what does that have to do with the words that he's saying? Deserve to like have anything taken from you or like face anything bad mm -hmm. because you are overweight. But there are things and there are consequences to that. People are not. Watch it. Why, why, why is she acting like this? There, there are consequences to anything that you do in life, okay? Just because you make a decision now and you're not facing any consequences for it right now doesn't mean there aren't going to be consequences in the future. Or maybe the consequences that you're facing are really ambiguous and you're not even seeing them as consequences. They could be positive consequences. Watch it, watch it, watch it. And this is you censoring They're passing yourself. this whole fucking thing from the last I saw, I don't keep up with shit, about like people having to buy two plane seats right. if i am someone that has to start but i fly first <laughs> we get it you're rich we get like, it if i'm in a situation where like i exceed the size requirement and they tell me i have to buy two seats because of how big i am i'm gonna just buy the seat and shut the fuck up period period slay queen edges that's exactly true that's exactly true take responsibility for yourself that is the right thing to do that's the adult thing to do you gained the weight you decided to eat you decided to put yourself in a bracket of crazy high weights to where you need to buy two seats why would you ever believe that you you're entitled to a second seat given the fact that you decided to make yourself bigger and this is like i watch this guy right and i hear the words he said from these videos and i go where is the lie 
Where is the incorrect statement? Why did you apologize? Why did you apologize? If you didn't do anything wrong, don't apologize. He didn't do anything wrong. My God. That's a consequence of my action to work out and get bigger. Period. It is my choice to make myself bigger. Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't matter if it's through working out or eating myself half to death. It yeah. doesn't oh. matter. Oh, what? Oh, what, dude? You get bigger through those those methods, dude. Are you fucking dumb? Where? How else are you going to get fucking big, dude? The fuck is wrong with you? That's a consequence. This is reality, babe. True. Mm -hmm. It's not about fair. It's about what the f You know, it's real easy for this person to make their, this response video to somebody that can't reply, dude. Come on. Hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up on Instagram, Victoria. Let's have a conversation. We can live stream. We can record it. We'll do everything. What the fuck is going on? Like, if there's a requirement, if you exceed that for either one, you exceed that. True. Take the consequence or don't fucking fly. Period. You know what I mean? Yeah. Safe to say. That respect that I had mentioned, yeah, that's not done absolutely zero respect for you again he's one i followed for a while i genuinely gave him the benefit of the doubt like you can watch my last video like i was very 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 willing and hoping to chalk it up to a miscommunication and some internalized fat phobia that i had hoped once was mentioned he would you know take a minute to reflect which is what he said in his apology seeing this video com completely changes the context of his feelings towards fat people. Like, his feelings towards fat people are take accountability for yourself, understand that what you're doing is your decision, and because of that, you should be expecting the world or expecting your life to change as a consequence of your actions. In the same way that if you took if you took a saw and you started cutting off your own leg, do you expect the world to, I don't know, make entire places or environments dedicated to you now because your leg is gone? No, that's not how that fucking works. So if you gain weight, wow. I'm sorry, dude. I, you know what's really crazy is like I have to explain these things, right? And I feel like when I explain this stuff, I'm like I can't even believe I'm explaining this because I watched his video one time. And I understood exactly what he was saying. I don't know how so many of these people, they must be doing it on purpose because there's no way that I'm like, I'm like 4D chesting this. There's no way that my brain capacity is like exaggerated to such a degree to where I'm like metadating the way that this guy is talking and understanding it on a deep fucking level. No, I'm really not. Like this is basic shit. So the fact that people are hearing what he's saying, it's easily understandable, easily digestible. He's not talking through like a Rosetta Stone or like a voice changer or something like that. Very great tone, articulate, whatever. And somehow you manage to completely miss everything that he says and come up with some other reasons why you think he's wrong, which are not reflected in what he said. I cannot believe it. I don't know why I have to keep explaining this shit as if these people are like, they, they must be some kind of like levels of, uh, they're either doing it on purpose or they're literally dumb. Like, this is not you saying the body wasn't flattered. It's not even about clothes now. If you view a lack of access to things as a consequence for being fat, you are fat phobic. You're dumb. You're fucking stupid. I'm sorry, Victoria, dude. That's a bad take. That's a very, that is a very, very, very bad take. If you gain weight and then you don't think there's going to be a consequence to that, what do you expect? Can we just talk about that for a second? You do realize that the entire societal structure that we have in place right now is not made for fat people. They, maybe things can get better. But even from a basic level, the the world in general has never and never has been made for fat people. You do understand that, right? It's a tough place to live. And maybe the world gets better. But the fact that you think that there should be no consequences to your actions is crazy. And to just chalk it up as fat phobia without any explanation at all is not cool. It's not cool at all because that'd be like the equivalent of somebody saying like, oh, um, you know, I think that like for me, for instance, right? I Maybe this is a controversial, controversial opinion, but I think anybody should be able to say anything. And if you have a problem with that in the same way that, for instance, if a black guy says the N word and nobody has a problem with it, if a white guy says the N word in the same context and whatever – um, it shouldn't be looked down upon unless you're using it in the racist context or you're using it within like a negative annotation. Nobody should look at it as a bad thing. You understand? Like if it's, it should be either okay for everybody or okay for nobody. And the fact that this woman doesn't believe in that, I don't know. For me, it just comes off very, very it's disgusting. Leo Skeppy, that was a fat phobic take. Like, and I just like, there's no nuance to it. There's nothing. You're literally just coming out and saying it's fat phobic. In the same way that a guy that says the N word, you would say he's racist without looking at it any further than that. That's gross. That's gross. You're not, you're, 
What you're actually saying right now is that you're just a one and done person. You don't believe in like lo looking at the research, looking at the background. And what's really crazy too is that the nuance was in the video. Like he literally made the video and it was all there and you still didn't get it. I just can't, as a gay man, wanting to- Why does it matter? Why does it matter if he's a gay man? Or fat phobic. Leo Skeppy, that was a fat phobic take. Like, and I just can't, as a gay man, wanting to make the joke about, oh, I'm not scared of fat people, as if homophobes don't use that exact same language. As dude, but like, oh my God, dude, I'm sorry, bro. This, this woman is fucking agonizing. I'm sorry. This is actually crazy. There's no way that I should have a more liberal ideology than you guys. That is crazy as fuck. Just because he's gay doesn't mean he can't talk about things or make jokes about things, even though he may or may not have exhibited those particular harms to him. Are you fucking stupid? Are you dumb? That'd be like you saying a black guy can't make a joke about him needing lotions and wearing fucking an ankle bracelet because people made fun of him at one point in his time, or maybe not because he was black and then he had to do those things. Are you fucking dumb? Why would you ever think that? That is the worst way of... Oh, oh, Victoria, come on, you're, you're way above this. You went to college, right? There had to have been some type of time in that in that college class. Like, what happened? What happened to you? Oh, oh, I'm, that's too much. That's too much. That last woman before this, like, and the one before that, it's like, what is going on right now? Did you guys just, like, lose, like, 50% of your brain cells? What happened? Oh my god! Oh my god, these people, this dude, Skippy, literally got you fucking believe in some crazy shit. Ooh, damn. Damn. A way to diminish and make fun of queer people. Like, that is insane. Even with all of the experience. What are you talking about? Because he's gay? He can't make comments on gay people? What are you talking about? ...that I have with fatphobic former fat people. I genuinely gave you the benefit of the doubt, but it's clear your issue is not just with your former body, it is with fat people in general. Safe to say, your latest video response now actually means nothing, because God, that sucked so bad. That I'm gonna keep it a buck, Victoria. I'm gonna keep it a solid buck. I tried to do the words you say, but they're meaningless. You have no consistency. You're literally talking out your ass right now. The words you expelled in this video have absolutely no reality to them. How can you do that? That sucked so bad. I'm like genuinely really upset. Fatness is morally neutral. You cannot morally disagree with being fat. That is not an option that you have. And you absolutely cannot be all for inclusivity if you morally disagree with being fat. Which the fuck? Ah! Oh. Oh, man, dude. This is crazy. This is fucking crazy, bro. You do not understand that. <sighs> if you're for inclusivity, right? That doesn't mean you can't be against something that incorp incorporates within the inclusivity. You do understand that, right? It, it, that's not how that works. That could You could be like, I'm for inclusivity and have a particular bracket where you're like really trying to include gay men or black guys or something like that. But you, you don't believe that. Because, like, the way that you guys put yourself next to minorities and, like, you you obviously think of yourselves as, like, some type of minority. And it's obvious. Like, you say it consistently. Like, you're an oppressed group in the same way that a black guy is oppressed or a gay man is oppressed or whatever. Whatever. So, I'm sorry, dude. I can't. This woman has got me fucked up. Bro. I'm not even going to bother explaining that shit. That is crazy. That is crazy. Which, again, is not something that you can do. Like, fat people just exist. It's a baffling thing to say. Fat people just exist. What is the harm of inclusivity? I often get people in my comments viscerally angry. The problem is like the way that you organize yourself based off of the inclusivity. Because if you're saying that basically inclusivity needs to be incorporated across the entire spectrum of our society, but you don't even believe that given the fact that you only want inclusivity based on things that they believe in, because you don't actually believe, for instance, that fat people should be included in things. You think that certain fat people should be included in things. You understand? In the same way that, for instance, I don't know, a black guy that believed in like white supremacist values, you wouldn't want them in that particular bracket, right? So it just depends on what you mean by inclusivity. Like, Again, nuance. Talk about it a little bit. 
at the suggestion, the mere suggestion, that fat people should also be able to walk into a clothing store and buy clothes that fit them. There are levels to it, okay? Like, for a long time, black people didn't have the right to vote, and black people weren't even citizens, and women didn't have the right to vote. These are all fucked up things, right? Naturally, you take steps, because these are big changes that you need to make. And as you get these big changes out of the way, you have less and less big changes. And sometimes, you don't have any at all. To where now, we have reached a point in our society where we're even arguing about something as crazy as fat people exist, fat people need clothes, society needs to advocate for this thing because fat people when in reality it's not something as like crazy as like a black guy existing and not being able to vote that's racist or in the same way that a woman can't vote because she's a woman that's misogynistic that's sexist right okay but it's not the same to say like these things are correlated to these other things you understand like these things are obviously way different you guys don't have to be fat a woman can't stop being a woman a black guy can't stop being a black guy right like i what would it harm you as a thin person it's like these people this is like the argument point that i hear quite a bit where it's like i'm not a big fan i'm not a big fan of like student loan debt forgiveness right for instance because i don't think that somebody i don't think the taxpayer should have to pay off another person's bill based off of something that they decided to do like if you wanted to go to school and you wanted to take out loans and you wanted to go into 100k in debt and then suddenly like somebody somewhere whatever president at that time whatever supreme court whatever whatever congress came together and decided that the taxpayer now now needs to incorporate a portion of his particular taxes or her taxes to that particular person right i'm, I'm against that and a lot of people would say Oh, but you're poor. So like you wouldn't even have to pay those things. Okay. So I just can't have an opinion on it because I, I can't think about these things. I can't talk about this stuff. Or that's like somebody going, you shouldn't have an opinion on an abortion because you don't have a uterus. Okay. That's a really dumb way of looking at it though. That's a really stupid way. So when you say, why does it matter to you, Victoria? Why do you say like, why, why would this affect you? It may not affect me. It may not affect me or like many other people, um, like visually, like it may not be right away, but the downward effect of it, the downward effect of it. If you are someone who everything, the entire fashion industry is catered to, why would it harm you? What effect would it have on you? Price increases. Um, you guys would have tons and tons of like it would be basically it would be enabling you guys to be fatter and fatter and fatter for a solution that you guys already had to begin with, which is just losing weight. Like the main takeaway from this whole entire thing is that you guys are fat because you decided to be fat. Most people. And you decided you don't want to be fat. And now you want society or big companies, depending on who you're talking about, to come together and make these things possible when the practicality of these situations are almost nigh feasible. And you think that somehow you deserve it. That's a problem. I like guess not, it may not even directly affect me, but the audacity, like this person said, right? Like the other person said, um, is crazy. Like you guys really are super entitled. For an entire other group of people separate from you to also be allowed to spend their money. And it's like, again, these people are just looking at it from like the tip of the iceberg and they're not looking at the, out, the downward effect of it. You don't think prices are going to increase in the same way that for instance, if you made like, for instance, like plane rides, if you made the seats bigger, you do realize the price of that plane ticket is going to go up because the, the, the it's less space on that flight. There's more fuel that's going to be taken up as a consequence of less people on that flight. There are going to be extra prices that have to go up in, in correlation to these people. Less plane tickets, more less people on a plane, less money. So they have to rise the cost in the same way. For instance, if you incorporate more and more of these really, really expensive um extra extra clothing whatever in these stores thin people are gonna have to pick up the cost in that in some in some tip, some particular type of way you do understand that okay no maybe not they want when fat people come online and talk about our experiences with fat phobia and talk about what it's like to live in a fat body and ask for better treatment ask to be treated as equals to be treated as people to be to be seen as human beings right there are people that get like viscerally angry because they're like well you could just lose weight right yeah. you guys don't just come on and talk to me Hit me up on Instagram. I promise I'll respond. But, okay. Like, that is not the conversation we're having right now. That's not the conversation you want to have right now. You're advocating for something that doesn't need to exist, given the fact that you have an easy solution, which is lose weight. You understand that? That's like the people. Man, it's okay. There's literally, I'm not even going to go off on this, dude. But you guys can just lose weight, and you would have the ability to buy the clothes. There are fat people that exist right now. Why are you treating these people 
badly because of the size of their body. It's not that they're treating them badly. I just think that you do realize that if fat people actually wanted the clothes, those would exist, right? You do understand that. It's not like – this is a thing called supply and demand. When you reach a certain level of obesity, I don't know how big Victoria is, but once you start getting really, really big – uh, the clothing just becomes, in general, very, very hard to create. Like I said before at the very beginning of the video, it's not as easy as just making clothes for fat people at four hundred, four, four, three to four, five hundred pounds. They're not going to fit across a giant spectrum of people, and it's very hard to fit these people accurately. So even if you did make clothes at that size, which very, not many, very people are buying those clothes at that size, given the fact they're on death store regardless, and why should you even care about closing at that side anyway? I mean, you're literally like death's door every single day. But regardless, not many people are buying the clothes. Not many people are even going to fit in the clothes. And then you still want them to make the clothes. Okay. No critical thinking. Why does the size of their body bother you so much that you feel the need to be cruel? Like, why are you getting upset at the mere suggestion of inclusivity? I let me know, please. That's it. I'm not. We can't do any more. I'm not doing this anymore, okay? How long is this video? Like an hour and 20 minutes, dude? I'm sorry, dude. It's just, it hurts me deeply, dude. That dude, Leo Skippy, literally killed, destroyed, abolished the fat acceptance community to the point where they've lost their mind. Like, I, I don't know if they've always thought like this or it's like a newfound wave of it, but it's insane. These people are literally coming out with like straight up racism, straight up like, <laughs> all right, whatever, man. It doesn't matter. You're beautiful today, by the way. You look great. You look really great. Yeah, wow. You look really good today. Look at you. <laughs> You're doing a good job for yourself. Taking care of yourself. Enjoying the world. Going outside. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Not today. It's a little rainy here, but it's okay. I like the rain. I like having it glaze off my skin. Um, anyway, <sighs> if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Um, if you are a member of my channel, you want to become a member of my channel, you can by clicking the subscribe button, which I'd appreciate. And then also, if you want to, after that, you can hit the join. If you don't want to though, that's completely fine. I want to thank everybody that is a member. Thank you so much. You're a beautiful specimen. If you already subscribed, thank you so much. You beautiful, amazing, spectacular person. I care for all of you guys. I care for anybody that watched to the end of the video. This video was agonizing for me, dude. I almost couldn't believe that the words were being said. It's, it's actually crazy to me. I can't believe these people say these stuff, but Regardless, um, if you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below in the comment section by typing in hair, H-A-I-R, because yours is amazing, beautiful, well lubricated, well cared for, absolutely the epitome of beautiful hair. And one thing I'll say about Victoria, her hair is nice. She has nice hair. I'll give her that. Very nice hair. Um, you can tell she takes care of it. That might be the only thing that she takes care of, though. But it doesn't matter. Your hair is looking exquisite today. Um, I don't know what you're doing to it. I don't know how you're able to contour it the way that you are. Um, and it's, it looks really good. It looks really good. Really good. <sighs> smells really good too. Mm, hubba hubba. Anyway, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Discord and my second channel. If you want to check out any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.